Hello and welcome to Pickle Alb's Gaming's inaugural video. Today, we'll be reviewing the movies. Oh yeah, that's right, I'm a gaming channel. It's the first video, you know. Gonna... Ah, here we go. The movies. And now, to tell you about this strange and wonderful game that is the movies. And it all started with... The Movies was a game produced by Lionhead Studios, a company ran by the winner of 2014's Most Dishonest Man, Peter Molyneux. A man known for Theme Park, if you're European, and Fable, if you're American. The Movies was produced sort of a stopgap between projects, and as we will see later, sort of becomes a weird victim of Peter's need to be a British Shigeru Miyamoto, despite his French namesake. The Movies is a business simulation game in which the player controls a movie studio with the sole goal to make movies. How do you make movies? By building sets and supporting facilities, and hiring staff and stars. When you play the game for the first time, it will pull you through a tutorial and put you in diapers for the first three or so years, providing you with your first two scripts and a lady who tells you exactly what to do. The game lasts from the 1920s to the late 1990s, early 2000s, giving you a wide range of tech and historical events to experience. There are five genres of movies, action, comedy, sci-fi, romance, and horror, each genre requiring different sets and what kinds of actors and with what experience they have. Which brings us to actors. Actors are needy, are needy little fuckers who over time, and because of how high a rating they get from being in movies and such, need higher pay. That and actors and directors need trailers, fashionable clothes, socialization, which turns the game into a shitty version of The Sims, for better or worse. Every five years there will be an award ceremony that will start up with three awards, then more awards come every year. Winning a particular award will grant you a sort of power-up that lasts until the next award ceremony. The graphics are decent for this era, this game, for when this game was released, and the sound design is beyond genius, with the music being the shining star of the game's presentation, starting with the ragtime of the 1920s to the jazz of the 1940s, to the disco and rock of the 60s and 70s, to whatever the hell the 90s were all about. However, the biggest problem in this game is the achievements. By achieving a high enough studio rating, or having an actor or director with a high enough star rating, and other factors such as how many movies you've released, or how much money your studio has, you get a little certificate with an unlockable such as a set, a trailer, or some sort of weird facility like the public relations building. But later ones require so much work because getting that perfect 5 star rating on a studio star is so weird to do because the game explains only a little on how to get the ratings up. Another problem, one I mentioned earlier, is that the game requires you to play the Sims by getting the stars to have relationships with other stars, putting shit around their trailer, and other useless bullshit that, like preventing them from being fat and alcoholic. Also, the studio lot can be a tad small, especially some of the coolest sets end up being the ones that take up the most space. So that does it. I might have glossed some things over, glossed over some things, you know. But this was one of the games that I grew up with. This was part of the holy trinity of video games that I played when I was little. The other being Rare Tycoon 3 and SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, which I will which I'm planning on reviewing on the future. Um that's it for my first video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you can, and I'll see you later.